uh, interview, Karen. Uh, as I said a minute ago, the great uh, governor of Nebraska today had a press conference in there refusing to take the bribe money, the $100 million. So that's a very good thing to And at this time, uh, I know a lot of you are very, very frustrated about what has happened to this great republic of ours and how it's slowly leading its demise. And it's up to each and every one of you, as great patriots like the founders of this nation, are standing up and saying, this is wrong, no more, we're not going to take it, so we're coming out on cold nights like this. Uh, my name is Robert Dean, I'm the communication director for the Time Water Libertarian Party, and if any of you have something to say just to get it out of your system, I would invite you to come forward right now to just to give your fellow patriots a word of encouragement or words of wisdom. Do I hear a taker? I'll say something. Right up here, ma'am. Good evening, patriots. I'm a person with a disability. And the reason I don't believe that this health care reform will work is because I need health care, yet they're going to write me a death penalty. And for every single elderly and disabled person, this is the end for us. So do everything you can to see that our family has a right to choose what health care is best for our family. That should be a family decision and not a government decision. Thank you. Who's next? Come on, don't be shy. Bruce Finkelstein, you have something to say? I have something to say. This is because of Bruce. If you haven't listened to the Tony McCraney show, which maybe two or three of you here do. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm retired Davy, and I've, I've had the uh, pleasure of using government uh, health care facilities uh, you know, for something catastrophic and good, anything else, you're a great Um This thing is wrong. <coughs> Uh, ben, ben Nelson, in the last vote, he was interviewed by CNNS, not CNN, CNN, the Conservative News Network, uh, news, whatever. And uh, he was asked by what justification in the Constitution that they could write this uh, health care and force people to buy insurance. And he said, pretty much, uh, I'm no constitutional scholar, so I, I, I'm not qualified to answer that question. This is the guy who did I'm happy with it. I tried to contact Senator Webb. He is uh, in line to jam and they're turned off to suffer. Yeah. And uh, well, I guess line to jam. He was elected with yeah. one word, Mahaka. And I got a word for him. from the Yiddish and Hebrew and his mom. You can ask me what that means later. Thank you. Hey. Uh, just to let everyone know, if, if you're not in tune to what's going on in the General Assembly, Delegate Bob Marshall is introducing a bill challenging uh, the constitutionality of this. Patrick McSweeney, who is the former GOP chairman of Virginia, who won the unelected regional transportation authority, got it overturned in the Virginia Supreme Court. Uh, he is probably going to take the case uh, and it's going to get down to state sovereignty and where the federal government cannot force things on the Commonwealth of Virginia. So that's what we're, we're hoping for. It's probably going to cost a lot of money, but it is going to probably happen. We have got some right 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 now in the Senate. We've got several in your house. So please call your state delegate and your state senator very possibly and will be encouraged them to step up and be a co patron of this bill. Because more co patrons than hand. Uh, I don't. House Bill 10. House Bill 10. Speak louder, uh, please. I'm just going to go a little bit off subject. I teach young adults in a group. 
our school boards, our colleges, our universities, and all of our education, including writing the textbook. I don't know if you realize it or not, but our history textbooks are coming out of the state of Texas. It has two Thanksgiving. One which is American, one which is American. about their sexuality. We also have them reading books about this woman who has written this book about this little girl who could marry anybody. She could marry a flower. She could marry a bike. I mean, it goes on and on. We have to become responsible for what our children are being educated. We must get involved. You have to get involved with your local CPA. Whether or not you have children, it just doesn't matter. Unless we start Reaching our children, what this country is all about is when there is no hope. They are the future. I know it's cliche. We've been saying it for generations, but it's the truth. And if they don't have any idea of where we came from, the struggles that were fought, the preservation of liberty is not going to be there. That's all I got to say. Folks, we have to remember one thing going back into the early 30s and through to the uh, our entering into World War II. Nazi Germany got started because of the apathy of its citizens. Hitler rose into power, took over the nation, and gave the people what rights he wanted them to have and took away all the other rights. We are now walking down a very slippery slope in this country well, we're losing our constitutional rights as individual Americans. If this sole bill goes through where that they're going to give, excuse me, I'm sorry. If, if, if this bill goes through and they outsource this to the government-only public choice, what it's destined to become is you'll only have one choice, and that will be the United States government for your insurance. They will control it all. All competition goes away. That is a very dangerous thing for this nation because we're now entering into fascism where the government controls all things, all for all people. So uh, I just want to remind everybody who may not be familiar what happened with World War II. Young lady, did you want to say something? I did, but I was going to go on to the you want to say something for that? <laughs> <laughs> Could you introduce yourself, please? I'm Toby Dillon. I was back in April. I helped start the Hampton Roads Party along with Karen. A little louder, please. I remember seeing some of you there. I wanted to talk briefly. I know we hear the talk of socialism and fashion, but I wanted to make this a little more personal for everybody. How many of you all have young children or have children under the age of, let's say, 18 still at home? One of the ways they're looking to pay for this health care bill is by cutting cutting some of the Medicaid payments to our hospitals. One of those hospitals that they're looking at cutting is right downtown in Norfolk, the Children's Hospital, one of our best children's hospitals in the state, the only hospital that has emergency care for young children. I've got a two -month -old, two, seven month old and a two year old daughter at home. So when I look at this health care, yes, I hear the things about us being concerned about the government taking over health care, taking away our choices, but for me it's a lot more personal. I don't want a representative who's going to vote to cut something that my children will eventually need. And we look at that the same way as with government spending. I don't want a government or a representative or a senator who's going to put my children in danger, who's going to take something from them that they can't fight for themselves. So that's why I'm out here. That's why I've been out here. That's actually why I'm considering running for Congress next year myself against one of the representatives in this area. So I definitely wanted to thank you all for coming out, and you know, I'm proud to stand with you all. People look at me, they see me out here, and they wonder, you know, what you're doing here. I'm here with fellow Americans, and for me, that's the most important thing. So thank you all very much.